If there's like two people that have the most loyal fans, it has to be Harry Styles and Taylor Swift. Oh, mom, do you have the picture of me crying at the One Direction concert? <laughs> it's so bad. I was like 14, I have like glasses on. I was all the way in the back of the stadium, but I thought he was gonna see me and I thought we were gonna fall in love and I looked really cute, but then I cried <laughs> a lot. Hey guys, it's Arena, and welcome back to another episode. We are at episode 17, which is insane. I cannot believe that. It's been amazing. I've had some amazing guests, but I'm bringing back to my roots today. We're doing a solo episode, which you guys seem to really like, and I also really like, because I just love to talk your little ear off. I'll be catching you up on what's been happening in my life. Yes, I have new hair. I know. I don't want to hear it. We'll get into it. I will also be responding to some threads you guys sent in and talking about how to deal with people hating on you tips for boosting confidence, how I de-stress, and my female role model or models right now, <laughs> which is crazy. You guys, bear with me on that one. And at the end, I'll be getting brutally honest about cuffing season because yes, unfortunately, it is right around the corner. So yeah, let's get into it. Guys, I changed my hair again. I do this a lot. It's so predictable. Honestly, you guys are over it. Like every time I'm seen in a salon, or like I post a picture on my Snapchat and you guys can tell I'm in a hair salon. You're like, stop, like leave your hair alone, which I totally understand because if you were following me three years ago, my hair fell out in chunks because I bleached the entire thing and it was really bad. And you know, here's my thing about like bleaching your hair blonde. Again, to each their own, do whatever you want. But me personally, and honestly, a lot of people that I've seen do it always bleach their entire head blonde and then go back to their natural hair color in a couple months. And then it's like, why did I just do that to my hair if I was just gonna go back to dark? So that's what I did. And my hair just fell out in chunks. And then I put extensions in. Oh my gosh, I had, I've had a journey with my hair. I put extensions in because I had no hair and I went brown again. And then, well, no, I kind of like slowly went dark again because if I had just dyed my hair dark I honestly would have been bald it was really bad and then I put extensions in then I cut all my hair off and it was really short it was like up to my ears it was so bad oh my gosh it was so bad that was the worst one I ever had in my opinion you guys don't like the blonde but honestly I'd rather have the blonde than the bob cut again um I did that and then it grew out to like my shoulders and it honestly like was pretty healthy for a second and then I had a little bit of a mental breakdown and I dyed my hair red <laughs> and then I put extensions in and then I cut it all off again dyed it black then I dyed it brown and now it I put extensions back in and I'm missing a lot of phases here I'm missing like the highlights um the like balayage there's a lot of you guys know like if honestly if you've been following me for a year you've seen me go through like 10 different hair phases but anyway this is a new one it's like kind of light brown extensions here's my thing I my hair is growing it's it's getting healthy and it's growing and it's gotten to the point where it's like at that weird awkward length where it's not short and it's not long so I just put extensions in and my plan is again plan like I'm not saying I'm gonna go through with this because I'm very unpredictable when it comes to my hair. But my plan is to let it grow with the extensions until it's past the awkward phase. And then I'll take them out. And then I'll leave it alone. I promise. I have to leave it alone because it's getting ridiculous. But honestly, anytime I have an inconvenience in my life, I just change my hair. Because here's my thing. Like, I was not, like, in a good place in January. So I changed my hair. But... What, why would you want to look like that version of yourself that went through something or like that had something terrible happen to them or like, I don't know, it, it'll remind me of a certain place in my life where I don't want the where I don't want to be reminded of. So I just change my hair. I know that doesn't make a lot of sense or I'll get tattoos or I'll get piercings. That's why I'm always changing my appearance. Not because honestly, it, not because I didn't like the way I looked, but just because I didn't like the place that I was in when I looked like that. Honestly, I just had like a little bit of a hiccup. Um, my mom's here. <laughs> so that's how you know if I'm going through it is because my mom comes to save the day. She's sitting over there. 
she's watching this. <laughs> she said hi. You guys couldn't hear her, but she said hi. Um, she, yeah, whenever I'm having a hard time, I'll just shoot my mom a cute little text. I'll be like, hi, like, you want to come visit? And then she's on a flight. And then she's here. Because I'm a very unpredictable person. <laughs> and she scared me a little bit, which is okay. It's valid. So she's here. And she supported the hair. And that's all I need is my mother's support. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh, well, also, I'm excited that I have long hair because I wanted to do something kind of crazy because I'm going on the Eras tour tomorrow and I'm so excited. I have like people that follow me that only follow my YouTube and that only follow my TikTok or my Instagram. But if you like if you're an OG and you like kind of follow across all platforms, especially Snapchat, then you know that I am a big Taylor Swift fan and I am a big Gracie Abrams fan. I love their music so much. I've specifically been on a Gracie Abrams kick and she's performing tomorrow with Taylor Swift and I'm really <laughs> excited. I wasn't going to go because well, those tickets are expensive. Like, it's kind of crazy. And I just was not, I couldn't. Like, I, I honestly, I have a hard time justifying spending ridiculous amounts of money at once. And I couldn't justify it. Also, I didn't want to go by myself. There was a lot of reasons where I just was like, okay, I can't. But Revolve is sending me, and I'm really scared to talk about this because um, last year, no, two years ago, maybe. I am a huge One Direction fan. My mom's over there. She can she can confirm this. She had to sit me down. <laughs> this is really embarrassing. <laughs> she had to sit me down when I was 14 years old at a restaurant with my dad. And they had to have a serious conversation with me and say, Sabrina, you are not going to marry Harry Styles. And this has to stop. Because it was a genuine belief of mine. And I cried. I cried in this restaurant. And... My actually, my dad's the one that said it, and I'm bawling my eyes out in this restaurant. And my mom had to go up to my dad and be like, "Don't say that. <laughs> like, that is territory you cannot enter. You can't say that," because I did believe it, and I have you know I don't regret it. I was so so infatuated with One Direction. <laughs> so crazy. <laughs> oh, mom, do you have the picture of me crying at the One Direction concert? <laughs> It's so bad. I was like 14. I have like glasses on. Like, oh, and I I got dressed up. I did my hair. I wore my cutest little outfit. Um, I was all the way in the back of the stadium. But I thought he was going to see me. And I thought we were going to fall in love. So I, I got dressed up. And I looked really cute. But then I cried <laughs> a lot. Okay. Listen, I was real. My feelings were hurt. Okay. You guys hurt my feelings because I really was a fan. Like I was an actual fan. And then I obviously grew up and I'm not like putting posters on my walls anymore. I'm sorry, but I wasn't doing that. But then Boohoo was, you know, they sent me a little email and they were like, do you want to come to Harry Styles concert? And are you kidding me? I was like, freaking out i was so excited i was so excited i'd been to so many i'd been to a couple one direction concerts but i hadn't been to harry's so i was like i i have to go and i went and i got all dressed up and i looked so cute and i was so excited and i knew every word to every song and then you guys made fun of me <laughs> well not you guys but there was a lot of people if you like if you remember this please comment because i got torn apart because everyone was like you're not a real fan and blah, blah, blah. You just went because like this brand sent you. And it really hurt my feelings. Like my inner child was hurt because I was like, wait, I love One Direction and I love Harry's music. So anyway, the point of that story is that I don't want that to happen again because I'm scared. You guys hurt my feelings. <laughs> I was like distraught. I was like in bed all day. Cooper had to like literally come in and be like, Sabrina, there are TikTok comments. But I was I was really upset. It was my inner child. I don't know how to describe it. Like, my inner child was hurt because my childhood was One Direction music. Anyway, please don't do that again. <laughs> like, I love Taylor Swift. Don't do that again. I don't know how to prove this to you guys. Anyway, after that, I just kind of stopped 
saying that I liked music online. But now I'm fine. Like this year I came back and started acting like a normal person again because I stopped being scared. But like, okay, if there's like two people that have the most um, loyal fans, it has to be Harry Styles and Taylor Swift. Mm -hmm. So that's why I'm like scared that you guys are going to be mad at me for listening to music. <laughs> I was doing little Harry dance. If you're a Harry Styles fan, you know exactly what I'm talking about. I was doing his little dance and I had Cooper do it with me and I thought it was so cute. And then it got like half a million likes, but it also got a lot of comments. <laughs> Later, I'm going to talk about how to deal with people hating on you all the time because I've experienced it once or twice in my lifetime or like today <laughs> in the past hour. But yeah, that was that was crazy. I, I think it's funny now and I laugh about it. But like in the moment, I was I remember actually being really my feelings were really hurt, which I thought was like Cooper thought it was funny that my feelings were really hurt because it was like kind of stupid that I was letting it get to me. But 14 year old Sabrina was heartbroken, heartbroken. Anyway, I'm going to Eras tomorrow and I don't know what to wear. I have no idea. Um, well, by the time this comes out, I would have already gone. So you guys will see the outfit that I wore. But I have the I have like the the dress I have the foundation of the outfit. I have like this really cute denim dress and depending on the accessories is what eras I'm going as. So I haven't figured it out, but I'll, I'll make a video about it. I'll do a whole thing. I will keep you guys updated. The last episode that aired was Trina's episode and it was crazy. <laughs> it was really emotional. I've never cried like that online. It was actually like insane. I was like embarrassed because I usually like I've shed a few tears on this podcast. It's OK. Oh, my gosh. No, I was like I was crying. Anyway, it was it was wild. I hope you guys enjoyed that. Episode. <laughs> I hope it was entertaining. Um, Sorry, my sarcasm like is just kind of dark sometimes. I'm working on it. But anyway, Triva, I don't know. I don't remember necessarily if we talked about this on the episode, but Triva wanted to. So she has um, Cooper and Parker's names tattooed on her the back of her neck and under their names. She got my name tattooed in my handwriting and it's so cute. It's so sweet. And I showed I showed Emma and she just like broke down crying. <laughs> it's so sweet. It's so sweet. And just thought I should share that with you guys because it was like so special. Now let's take a quick break to hear a word from our sponsors today at HelloFresh. This summer, I've been trying to cook more and honestly, it's been going pretty well, but let's be real, it's thanks to HelloFresh. HelloFresh is your go-to spot for amazing pre-portioned ingredients that travel from the farm right to your doorstep in less than seven days. I'm trying to maximize my free time this summer and it takes a lot of time and energy to plan a full meal, let alone three meals a day. But with HelloFresh and their 40 plus new recipes each week, you can build delicious meals without setting foot in a grocery store. Plus, when you're extra pressed for time, HelloFresh has a wide selection of fast and fresh recipes that are ready in 15 minutes or less. And as a whole, HelloFresh is 25% cheaper than ordering takeout. Some of my recent favorites are mozzarella crusted chicken, sweet potato and black bean tacos, and their cherry balsamic steak. HelloFresh lets you have it all, free time and fresh and tasty meals with vegan and protein smart options. Go to HelloFresh.com slash 50BrutallyHonest and use code 50BrutallyHonest for 50% off plus free shipping. That's HelloFresh.com slash 50BrutallyHonest with the code 50BrutallyHonest for 50% off plus free shipping. Come experience why HelloFresh is America's number one meal kit. Now, on to the show. Well, guys, I posted on threads. I'm a threader. I threaded. Honestly, first of all, I feel like people aren't using it as much. Can we bring it back? I was really enjoying that. Um, anyway, I posted on there and I was like, what do you guys want me to talk about? Give me some topics. Ask me some questions. I'll give you advice. You know, the usual Sabrina thing. And you guys gave me six pretty good topics. So I'm going to get into that. The first one is how to get over somebody that you never dated. Okay, I'm going to assume this is like a situationship type of scenario. And literally, this could be like a situationship of six months. It could be me when I was 14 with Harry Styles. Um, there's like so many different ways this could go. But either way, um, if you didn't date someone, if you weren't in a committed relationship with somebody and you are obsessing and lusting over them, it probably means that there is something missing in your daily life 
And listen, I get it. Like everybody wants attention. Everybody feels lonely and everyone wants affection. And I get it. Trust me, I get it. I have a tendency to go looking for things that usually aren't even there because I don't like being alone. And that is very common. But the way that you fix that is by, you know, preoccupying yourself with healthy and productive things instead of stalking their social media or making scenarios up in your head that don't actually exist. And look, don't put people on a pedestal that they shouldn't be on. Like most times these people aren't as amazing as you're making them out to be. You're just convincing yourself that they are because you're romanticizing something that isn't even there. So instead of doing all that, you could go to a pottery class or go on a walk or hang out with your friends and have a cute little game night. That's what I do. I hang out with my friends and then I feel so much better and I don't, you know, date somebody in my mind. That's not that's not healthy. And you are your own best friend. At the end of the day, the only person you're always going to have is yourself. And I saw this thing actually, and it was like really cool. I don't know. I'd never thought about it like this. It was like um, somebody saying that they loved themselves because that and they kind of talked about themselves in a third person point of view. They were like, I love myself. She is always there for me. And she buys me my favorite things in my favorite colors. And she picks me up when I'm down. And she feeds me and fuels me. And, like, that was such a cool and, like, interesting way to look at it is to, like, look at yourself as a third person. And then you kind of start to find a little bit of more appreciation for yourself because when you, like, think of yourself as you, I don't know, we tend to be really harsh on ourselves. And if you look at yourself in the third person point of view, it's like easier to see how incredible you are and like all the things that you do for yourself, if that makes sense. Next is how to deal with people hating on you all the time. I used to be so bad at this. I used to be so bad at this. Again, if you're like an OG and you've like seen my growth throughout social media, because I literally... I went through my like young adulthood on social media and it was public for everybody to see and all of my little mistakes were just public for everybody to see and it was not fun and a lot of people that work with me on this podcast like have literally been like damn the comments are like crazy with you like what is going on but it's been like that since I started social media for some reason even like my friends will be like you always get the worst comments and I've grown tough skin around it. I don't let it get to me anymore, which is like funny because I just went on this tangent about how it like cried about the Harry Styles thing. But that was just like that was a spe- that was listen, that was different because it was my inner child being hurt. But I used to let every little thing get to me and I let the way that people talked about me define the way that I saw myself. But then I kind of had to realize and like. It was from having people that knew me and that were really close to me t- tell me, be like, I don't understand why you get these comments. I don't understand like this, this and that. Why don't you defend yourself? Why don't you say your side of the story? Why don't you say the truth? Why don't you do this and that? But at the end of the day, I started to see social media and like my life it from an outsider point of view as reality TV. If that makes sense. Um, and for me specifically, my life is a form of entertainment for people and which I'm completely okay with that's what I chose to do for a living and I'm aware of that I'm not gonna sit here and pout and cry because people have opinions of my life that's my job so when people say something about me or form an opinion about me I just have to keep in mind that that's like entertainment for them and they don't actually know what's going on but they don't have to know what's going on they don't want to know what's going on they want the most entertaining thing because that's like that's the whole point of influencers. So once I kind of realized and I took myself out of it and I saw like the bigger picture of the fact that like this is all just one big reality TV show and not all reality TV is like real, you know, it doesn't have to be 100% the truth and I don't have to defend myself and say this and that because at the end of the day, like I know who I am and my loved ones know who I am. So it's like all I really need. 
Okay, question number three is what is my go-to self-care routine that helps me unwind? I have really bad anxiety, like really bad anxiety. It is like crippling, like to the point where I will like physically get ill from anxiety. And that is like really hard to come down from. Like your heartbeat starts racing. It's so physical and it's not just mental that it's like hard to control. But breathing is crazy, guys. Like deep breaths are insane, the things they can do for you. And also um, doing things that bring you like joy and like serotonin. Like I used to run in high school and it was my entire life. I did it competitively for so long. And runner's high, like so much serotonin and adrenaline like that was that made me feel good physically. Um, I'm a very creative person. I'm very crafty. So building Legos, painting, drawing, writing, anything that like is me producing art will make me very happy. So it's honestly just pinpointing the things that make you like actually feel serotonin, like literally feel joy. Cause that's all chemical, you know, you need to like pinpoint what it is that's like releasing these endorphins for you and then do them. <laughs> and then you just do them. Um, I also love TV, which is like, they don't, it doesn't need to be this crazy. Like I'm going to go on a hike and I'm going to, it doesn't need to be crazy. I love TV. I love watching movies. So I'll watch a movie. Also, if I, my phone is, I make jokes about it all the time on this podcast about how I want to like throw it and just break it. But my phone is a big um, source of stress for me. And I've recently just been turning it off. Literally yesterday, I was having a hard day and I grabbed my phone and I gave it to Emma. And I said, just take it. And she took it. She just took my phone for like a majority of the day and it was amazing. So honestly, it's it's like so ridiculous to think about because we don't we don't realize how simple it is, but if something is causing you stress, it is pretty it's like the solution is to simply remove yourself from that situation and it is hard and like so sometimes it's really difficult to do because you're so comfortable, but eventually once you like get past this little like hump and like you you like get past like that little bit of heartache that it causes you you're gonna be like oh my god whoa I'm not stressed anymore also you can cry if you want to I'm not I don't do a good job at that I'm not a big crier I'm not but sometimes you should cry I kind of like my thing is I I don't cry a lot, so but sometimes when I know I need to cry, here's my thing. I know, I think this is like a universal thing that like some people just literally cannot get themselves to cry even if they need to. But I found that if I put on a really sad movie, I will eventually start crying during this movie or like, you know, you can cry about something, but when in, in reality, it's about something else. It seems simple to cry about like, oh my gosh, I watched the Titanic, I'm crying and I can't stop crying. And like, oh, well, that makes sense. You just watched the Titanic. But in reality, you're crying about something else. That's perfectly okay too. But sometimes people just cry easily, which is also awesome. And I'm jealous of you if that's the case. Question number four is how do you handle stress and challenges in everyday life? Personally, I'm not the best at this because I have, um, I have a tendency to let emotions, like I push away my emotions until they completely build up and then I'm calling my mommy. Um, but when I am really stressed out, it's, I, I like I kind of just touched on this, it, it gets really physical for me and like it like physically affects me. And like I, it's, it's crazy actually, it's really insane. But breathing is really good. And I do also have to remind myself, the thing is I hate, I hate change, but the only constant is change and it, everything changes all the time. Nothing is always going to, it's not always linear, you know, everything's just going to go up and down and up and down, but I am terrified of change and I'm such a control freak, which is why I like don't like traveling and like moving is scary to me and I stay in relationships that I shouldn't be in because I, I'm comfortable and I don't like change. But at the same time, sometimes I have to like sit back and remind myself that change is kind of exciting. And once you kind of start to look at it like that, it's a lot easier to, you know, go into it because it's cool to be like, well, you know what? It's terrifying that I won't know where I'm going to be 
or how I'm going to feel in a week. But also it's exciting. Like what if you're doing something amazing or something you're really looking forward to? It's really about your view on things and like how you approach them. Because if you're approaching things and you're like, oh, I'm terrified, well, then you're going to feel stressed and anxious. But if you like change your narrative about it and think it's kind of exciting to not know what the f- I'm doing, <laughs> then it's easier, I think. I think that in my head, everything happens for a reason. And literally, if if something feels wrong to you in your gut, then it's wrong. It's it's wrong. It's not supposed to feel like that. Friendships are supposed to bring you joy and happiness and uplift you. Relationships are supposed to bring you love and comfort. So if those aren't the feelings that you're feeling, then something is wrong. But also, I was talking about this on Dom's podcast. Um, it is really a communication thing and like everything is has solutions, but it's up to you if you want to put in the effort to fix them, to solve them. But back to what I was saying, I don't know what, how I got here. Um, when I have like stress to the point where it becomes physical and like I'm having panic attacks or anxiety attacks, I do this little thing. I, I obviously breathe a lot. Like I just take deep breaths because I will like start to hyperventilate, but I like to pick out something I can smell, something I can touch, something I can taste, something I can see, something I can hear. I just like tune into my senses and it makes me feel grounded again because sometimes you get like so deep into your emotions that you just like have kind of an out of body thing. At least I do. And I disassociate. So if I can touch and I can like really tune in on my emotions, I start to feel like a human being again. And that helps. (laughs) What is your favorite way to boost your confidence? Okay, like, I'm not, like, don't take my advice here because I just, like, change things. I'm constantly changing how I look. And, like, not, like, actually, you know, it's just I change my hair or I get piercings or I don't know. I, I, like, I feel excited when I switch things up and I don't see why you wouldn't, you know? I don't know. I think hair grows back. Everything is, like, so not that serious so whenever I need a little confidence boost I just switch it up I'll change my hair I'll go get a piercing or I'll get a tattoo and it makes me feel super good about myself which is what I do when you are feeling insecure or you're not feeling confident you are thinking in your head you know like this is you're making up like scenarios in your head about how people are perceiving you and you're thinking that they're they are not looking at you the way that you want to be looked at. So for me, um, when I change my hair or I change my tattoos or I get piercings or I do anything, change my style, it could be, it doesn't need to be something drastic like that. Sorry, you don't have to go get a tattoo. But you could even just like do something a little out of your comfort zone and that is something you can control and you can't control the way that people look at you or perceive you. So you do things that you can control and it makes you feel more confident because it's like, oh, this is my body and I get to choose what I do with it and how I look. And this is how I want to be perceived. My female role model or models right now. <laughs> I have really been watching Keeping Up with the Kardashians lately. <laughs> I love reality TV. OK, I'm, I, which is why I totally don't blame you guys when you look at my life as reality TV, because I'm like, dude, I get it. I love reality TV. But I've been watching Keeping Up with the Kardashians lately and, like, this last season. And, dude, they're, like, badasses. They're badasses. And I admire them for it. Like, they, the amount of judgment and hatred and just, like, negativity thrown their way is, like, unbelievable. But, you know, if you watch the show, it's the way that they view it, it's really, it's really admirable in my opinion they're badasses kim is a badass and if you want to if you want to dog me for that fine i'll take it but i've been watching and i'm like you know what i'm gonna get my ass up and i'm gonna go do something and i don't know it's it's been speaking to me lately and don't make fun of me but maybe you agree maybe you don't but i just think it's cool to watch like women do such incredible things and like be so powerful and you know, not really care what people have to say about it. It is time for my brutally honest segment. 
October is coming up. Halloween. Christmas time. Oh, I am. It is so devastating being single during the holidays. It is so hard. And I'm not good at it. It is cuffing season. I I realize now that I'm single during the holidays, I realize why they call it that. Because everybody does not want to be single during Christmas time. It's depressing. You don't have like a cute little couple's costume for Halloween. And I want to like, I don't even want gifts. I want to like give a significant other gift that's so cute and like wrap it up and just be cute and corny. Oh, I'm such a hater when I see the cute couples. I'm like, ew, corny. But then in my head, I'm just jealous. <laughs> I want it. I want to be cute during the holiday season and wear matching pajamas. Guys, it's so hard out here. <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm literally not talking to anybody. And I don't like I see right now in this specific moment, I'm like, everybody stay away from me. Like, I, it was actually funny. I don't remember when I said this, but. I, w I saw a fan edit the other day and it was like an edit of me being like, if you're a man and you come up to me, like, what do you want? And I was like, when, when did I say that? Under what context have I ever said that? But that's like kind of how I'm feeling right now. You know, I'm just like, I don't, I'm not interested in it, but I know that in a month my mind will be changed because I'm be like, wait, like I saw this cute, like, oh my gosh, I was on TikTok and like, I saw this really cute couple's costume. I want to be Timmy Turner and Trixie. That's so cute. Oh, anyway, but I'm single and it's like really devastating because everyone's going to look so adorable and like, God, whatever, you Barbie and Ken's, like, just go away. <laughs> I'm so over it. Anyway, Christmas time is hard. And I understand. I understand now. I didn't get it before. I was like, what do you mean cuffing season? Oh, my God. I get it. Like, why would you want to be single during the winter? Anyway, my DMs are so open. <laughs> I'm going to get a body pillow. Yep. And I'm going to buy myself presents. Mom, can you buy me presents? Okay, guys. That is it for today's episode. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me. You can follow my socials at Sav Casada on all social media platforms and Sabrina Casada on YouTube. You can watch this video format on Past Your Bedtime's YouTube channel and you can stream it on all streaming platforms. You guys should definitely comment and ask me little things to talk about. Ask for advice. I really, okay, guys, listen, I want you guys to give me like in, in detail, in depth, like scenarios or like things that have happened in your life so that I can react to them entertain me please and then i'll entertain you back it's like a you know give and take also guys um having some special guests on soon and i'm gonna do more interview style because i know i talk a lot and i like to chit chat but i kind of want to start like interviewing my guests and getting to know them because most most of the time i don't know them as well as you think i do so i'm gonna start doing some interview style podcasts so stay tuned for that because i'm really excited about it i hope you enjoyed me blushing over harry styles and We'll see you next week. Bye.